To our shareholders, all of you in the room and on the webcast globally, once again, thank you for your support. Please know that we are listening to you and are here to represent your interests. You are the owners of the company and your voices, your perspectives and your input are critical to what we do here at Tesla each and every day. And number six, the 2025 CEO performance plan to Elon Musk. The te We also have eight shareholder proposals that are described in our proxy statement. The first one is an advisory vote regarding board authorization of investment in XAI. I urge the board to exercise its discretion and authorize a strategic investment in XAI in some meaningful way, sooner rather than later. This isn't just capital, it's about formalizing Tesla's role as a leader in autonomous intelligence turning AI into our new book, not just a new chapter. I declare that the polls are now closed. I'd like to announce these results on a preliminary basis. With respect to proposal seven regarding XAI, while we have received more votes in favor than we did in against, there were a significant number of abstentions. Since this is an advisory vote, the board will examine the next steps in light of this level of shareholder support. On the 2025 CEO Performance Award to our founder and CEO, Elon Musk, with over 75% voting in favor, approved. I declare this meeting is now closed. Elon Musk. I mean, those bots are just dancing. They have no wires. Those are actual robots. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just give a heartfelt thanks to uh, everyone who supported the, the shareholder votes. Uh, I super appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm going to say a bunch of things that probably I shouldn't say, you know. But, but that's what keeps it interesting. The scale of, of, of Optimus, like I said, that's really going to be something else. I think it's going to be the biggest product of all time by far. Yeah. So, like, bigger than cell phones, bigger than anything. Um, I guess the way to think about it is that uh, every human on Earth is going to want to have their own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. So who wouldn't? Uh, but, it, but actually, Optimus will be even better than them. I, like, everyone's going to want one. Uh, I think with, in terms of uh, industry, providing products and services, I think it's probably, I don't know, three to five robots in industry for every you know, one that's a, a personal robot. I, I think there could be tens of billions of, of Optimus robots out there. Now, obviously, it's very important we pay close attention to safety here. We, 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 do, we do want the, the, the Star Wars movie, not the J Jim Cameron movie. Um, I, I, I love Jim Cameron's movies, but, you know, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> We're going to launch on uh, the, the fastest production ramp of, of any product, of any large complex manufactured product uh, ever. And starting with building a million unit production line in, in, in Fremont, that's, that's, that's line one. Um, and then a 10 million unit per year production line here on the... <laughs> I don't know where we're going to put the 100 million unit production line. <laughs> maybe on Mars, I don't know. But I think it's, it's going to literally get to 100 million a year, uh, maybe even a billion a year. You know, people often talk about like eliminating poverty, giving everyone amazing medical care. Well, there's actually only one way to do that, and that's with Opt the Optimus robot. So I think that's, that's a pretty wild concept to say, okay, if you, you know, there's all, people always talked about eliminating poverty, but actually Optimus will actually eliminate poverty. Optimus will actually give people incredible medical care. Start getting like sort of some pretty wild sci-fi sort of scenarios. 
and some of these w things I say will obviously be taken out of context and using snippets and you know sent around, but whatever. I'm still going to say them. Y you know, like I think we, may, we might we may be able to give people a more uh, if somebody's committed crime, a more humane form of uh, containment of future crime, which is if if you if you say like you now get a, a, you now get a free Optimus and it's just going to follow you around and stop you from doing crime. <laughs> but other than that, you get to do anything. Just, it's just going to stop you from committing crime. That's that's really it. Um, you know, then you don't, have to, you don't have to put people in like prisons and stuff. I think uh, it's pretty wild to think of the, the various of all the possibilities. But I think it's 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 clear it's clearly the future. And 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 things do get kind of wild from an economic standpoint because at a certain point, uh, AI and robotics, you can actually increase the global economy by a factor of ten or maybe a hundred. There's there's not like an obvious limit. Like Optimus is kind of like an infinite money glitch. Maybe there won't even be money in the future, or, or, or money, but it might be measured in terms of wattage, like how much uh, you know power can you bring to bear uh, from an electrical standpoint. I guess what I'm saying is, uh, hang on to your Tesla stock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the, fa the fact that every Tesla car is capable of full self-driving, every car we build and have built for the last several years is capable of. Uh, Full self-driving is, is pretty wild, and most people don't, don't know that. The first car that is specifically built for unsupervised full self-driving to be a robo-taxi, it's called a cyber cab. It doesn't even have pedals or a steering wheel. And, and it's, it's very much optimized to, for, for the lowest cost per mile in, a, in an autonomous mode. Um, and that production is happening right here in this factory, and we'll be starting production in April next year. The way that um, CyberCab is designed is it's designed uh, obviously for a purely autonomous world, but also the manufacturing system is uh, unlike any other car. Uh, it, the manufacturing system of the CyberCab, it's closer to a high volume consumer electronics device than it is a, a car manufacturing line. So the net result is that I think we should be able to achieve, I think ultimately less than uh, a 10 second cycle time, basically a unit every 10 seconds. Uh, maybe ultimately take a few years to get there, but it's theoretically possible to get to a five second production time. And um, what that would mean is on a, on a line that would normally produce, say, 500,000 cars a year at uh, uh, a one minute cycle time, this, this would be maybe as much as you know, two or three million. Maybe ultimately, you know, it's theoretically possible to achieve a five million unit production line uh, if, you, if you can get to the five second cycle time. W once we reach uh, about a million units per year uh, of sustained production or in excess of that, I think probably the cost of production is around $20,000 in current year, current year dollars. Yeah, like I said, I think Optimus will ultimately increase the size of the economy probably by a factor of 10 or more. You know, next year we start production with Optimus version three uh, this, what you're seeing here is Optimus version 2.5. Optimus 3 is, is an incredibly good, good design. Even when we extrapolate the best case scenario for chip production from our suppliers, uh, it's still not enough. So I think we may have to do a Tesla Terrafab. So it's like Giga, but way bigger. I, I can't see any other way to get to the volume of chips that, that we're looking for. Um, so I think we're probably going to have to build a gigantic trip app. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be done.